Is there a link up on YouTube somewhere? That, uh... Okay, guys, yeah. um, you can get to we're it. live. We're, we're about to start here in a, a minute. We just want to make sure we are rolling before the time so we're ready to go. Everyone silence your phones and Macs and stuff. Get up, sir. Yep, looks like we're on now. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Hello, YOLO. Are we streaming? We are. I don't know. <laughs> YOLO. Yep. Yeah, we're streaming. All right. Nice. Wow. Okie dokie. We're going to make a quick adjustment here. That's perfectly fine. I don't. Yeah. Well, if you're joining us, and uh, that is a 4K camera if I've ever seen one. Oh, goodness. If you are joining us on this live show, actually, here we go. I got too many, I got too many monitors going on trying to stay. Trying to stay on top uh, on there. So if you are joining us today in our second live show, we got so much going on. We call this month 70 plus month. 70 plus month in terms of we are launching over 70 uh, different things. We have approximately 20 brand new full-fledged courses we're launching. Over 50 independently consumable practice and real live environments as well as our real uh, real time grader which is our feedback system and our brand new practice exam quiz system which is going to be launched with all of ours we'll demo it again here and talk about it a little bit which is going to be launched with all of our uh, new content and so today in fact I'm actually joined by a few of our course authors and we'll introduce them here in a second for those of you who were with us yesterday I bet you're just in amazement of the fact that we're actually starting on time and it's working and so what I want to show you is because uh, the team we have 90 plus staff members here at Linux Academy and they were watching uh, this live show yesterday and um, I, I get a message and it turns out that they wanted to improve it a little bit and so Davis if you'll turn this camera I now and, and show them over there I now have oh there's Davis I now have a management team that is managing my live stream and making sure that uh, we're, we're going a, a little bit better here. So we have four people required here to make sure that uh, uh, we, yeah, I don't debacle it, really, is what's happening here. So uh, I don't know if live is the best, best place for me. So thanks for joining. Thanks for your patience yesterday. It's going to be a great part here. So I'm really excited. Actually, today I have the chat open, and uh, we got quite a few people in here today. I don't know. I don't know. What is Ruplater? Is that what it is? Ruplater? I don't know. Seems like a game. Good morning. Welcome to the live show, if that's your name. Uh, anybody else on here? Nope. Uh, well, there's lots of people on here. There's Joel. All right. So good stuff going on. Oh, you can browse down. All right. So this is, I'm not multitasking. You ever see those people doing those live streams and they're just like seeing it and also looking at the camera? This is, this is too new for me. So we have some really good stuff going on. This is a big month. We're getting ready to dive into it. Real quick, before you do it, go ahead and follow me, Anthony D. James, or you probably want the rest of the URL. It's going to be twitter.com slash Anthony D. James. Or on LinkedIn, you can connect with me at Anthony D. James. Had over 100 connections yesterday after the live show. That was super awesome. Glad to connect with you all. Love celebrating in your success. Alternatively, if you really want to, you could also follow Linux Academy at twitter.com slash Linux Academy com. You could follow us on YouTube, which is, I believe, youtube.com slash Linux Academy com. And I'm sure we're on LinkedIn somewhere on an address under Linux Academy. Just make sure you check out the linuxacademy.com and look for Pinehead the Penguin. So this is, this is really, really good. And, uh, I should have beer for people managing the stream for me. <laughs> You've now just set an expectation that they're going to want me to live up to. So now I'm going to have to do that. So we're going to have to get beer for the next. Maybe if we're going to do that, though, let's not have the show at 1045 a.m. in the morning. Uh, and maybe we should maybe do a little bit in the afternoon, maybe like a 4 o'clock, a 4 p.m. show would be. And I know it's not that time with everybody around the world, but. You know, we'll we'll change the time and have some beer then. Maybe uh, maybe a little maybe a little whiskey or bourbon with it. And uh, we'll have to have Tom on for that. Tom's a big uh, Tom Hazlitt, our head of AWS content, is a big whiskey fanatic. 
So, all right. So you guys can't see me right now. What you're seeing on our screen is our connection information, and we are going to have some fun. Let me go ahead and introduce you to the content team members we have with us today. And magically, magic management team of me, let's make them happen. Show them on the screen. There we go. So today we have a new, I would say new course author. He's going to talk about his brand new and first course launch on Linux Academy. And his name's Joseph Lowry. So say hello, Joseph, and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey, everybody. How's it going today? Um, coming to you live from Brooklyn, New York. I'm a course author at Linux Academy now. Really happy to be here at the company. But I'm a long time author. Um, for those of you who are experienced on the front end of things, maybe you know a little program called Dreamweaver. I'm the author of the Dreamweaver Bible series of books and I've done about 40 plus online videos uh, around the web. So um, you may have seen my face or at a conference or two at uh, Adobe Max. I've done some presenting there as well. But uh, I'm really happy now to be with Linux Academy and working on Google Cloud Platform. That being said, we are happy to announce our 2018 version course of Adobe Dreamweaver. <laughs> we are now going. To, no, that's not a real thing. That was totally no. not real. Sorry. So welcome, 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 Joseph. And next, let's go ahead and see who else we have with us on here. We are joined again by Matt. So tell us a little bit about yourself and say hello again, Matt. Hello again, everyone. Uh, as Anthony said, my name is Matt. I live in the Kansas City area. Been here with Linux Academy since May of last year. And yeah, we launched a new course yesterday, but we already know that since we went through that yesterday. But uh, yeah, great. Happy to be here. Well, that course yesterday, we'll recap here in a second, but that course yesterday also was uh, a Google Cloud Security Essentials. By you, Matt, Correct. which was really, really, really cool. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, hey, those guys look like they're not in the same office as you. So real quick, a little bit about Linux Academy. Our headquarters is in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We have a uh, we have a main two-story building, and then literally we have a little walkway to another building, which is actually where we're at now. And in our office here, I think we have about 53 in-office staff. And the rest of our 90 staff is actually remote uh, because, you know, not all the experts that are teaching here are located in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, right? Uh, experts can be located anywhere. We want to make sure we find the best people. So we have people uh, all over the place. So let's go ahead and say hello to our head of Google Cloud and OpenStack content, Stephen Smith. So tell us a little bit about yourself and say hello, Stephen Smith. Hello, Stephen Smith. Uh, so yeah, I'm uh, over Google content, as Anthony mentioned, as well as OpenStack, uh, and some other stuff that we're about to release. Uh, Stephen likes to act like he's the Riddler and randomly okay. put a uh, question mark above his head quite frequently. I keep seeing that. I'm back as a question mark again. I don't know what's up with that, but that's okay. Um, yeah, happy to be here. I'm actually in Kansas City as well. Been with Linux Academy for several years. Um, and uh, I just really am excited to see what's going to happen over the next several years because you guys are about to see a ridiculous amount of awesomeness come from this content team that is uh, most of them right here in front of us, uh, especially when it relates to Google. Yeah, absolutely. And Steven was the first, actually, he joined Linux Academy on, let me see here, May of 2013? Full time, like that. Yeah, and then uh, Linux Academy started in March of 2012, and it was kind of a uh, part time thing I did for about a year. And then Stephen joined. We had some part time people from there as well. And then we had Stephen join as our first full time member in May of 2013. And then for more context, in January of 2016, we had seven full-time staff members. In January 2017, we had 40 full-time staff members. And in January, or currently today, we have just over 90 full-time staff members. And in fact, Joseph, Matt, what do you guys think about working at Linux Academy? What do you guys think about it here? Dude, I love it. Um, best job I've ever had. You know, but I know that Sounds kind of cliche, but uh, yeah, it's actually uh, life changing. I get to basically be paid to learn the most cutting edge technology platforms and change people's lives in the process. Uh, one of the highlights of my day is reading through our community and reading about how someone passed the Google Cloud Architect exam and our courses helped. And that's pretty nice feeling, to be honest. 
Yeah, I have to echo that. I mean, we've had a, um, I've had a really good experience. I've just come on the team, uh, but it's been, everyone's been very warm and welcoming. Community is really, really great here and very supportive of each other and of the students as well. Anthony is the master of swag, and uh, you can always count on getting um, all of your swag in, in huge boxes. Here's my little uh, stress ball. Why would I have a stress ball? Why would I possibly need a stress ball? I can't imagine, but comes in handy, Stephen. I yeah, mean, it, Anthony, thank you very much. It, it comes in the welcome box. because stress ball comes in the welcome box. So, I mean, derive whatever you want from that. I don't know. But, Joseph, we're <laughs> really, really glad to have you. I think your first day was December 26th, actually, of this past year, of 2017, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, I got a call, and um, they said, hey, how would you like to fly to Kansas City the day after Christmas? And I go, I, sounds ideal. What else could I possibly want to do? That's uh, Sub-Zero, Kansas. <laughs> so for, for those of you watching, we are dead serious about uh, producing for our students. We waste no time whatsoever. And in fact, Joseph, you've also, don't give the names, we're going to clue into a little bit, but you've also already dug in and started your next two courses that you're going to be launching in next quarter that have to do with Google Cloud. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. I actually was working up a syllabus a little bit earlier this week. And uh, things are already moving along. Stephen and I were talking about some exciting ideas of bringing in additional project information and really real-world scenarios to make it easy for students to relate to it and then carry it further. That's super exciting. And then, Matt, you also are working on something. And we're going to give you all a clue on what Matt's working on. And we're going to give you the clue. And we're going to let these kind of Google uh, and Matt – Take this any way you want. Matt is the de facto Google fanboy that you will ever meet in your entire life. If there's a problem, yo, Google solve it, uh, basically, is where we're at on that. And, uh, and uh, I, heck, I'm actually fairly certain yesterday with our audio issues, you were like, well, hold on a second, Google, and we were like, hold on, hold on, we're not there yet. Uh, but so to give a clue of what Matt's working on for next quarter before we announce our new courses today, why don't you guys tell us what you think about this March Madness Google prediction data thingy going on that Google has going. Uh, and in fact, who wants to give us a little recap about what's going on? Matt, do you know what they're doing there? Yeah, but it's actually a really clever marketing thing that kind of came in conjunction with a recent partnership. I think about a month or two ago. Uh, the NCAA, like the entire organization, moved their data analysis over to Google Cloud Platform. And if you were watching any of the Final Four games, which I saw one of them until my team got blown out, but whatever, such is life, uh, you saw advertisements, especially at halftime, where they were giving real-time predictions about what you're going to see in the next half due to data and machine learning, two things that Google really is a clear leader in. Um, compared to all the other cloud platforms. And they're basically predicting, hey, here's where, here's how confident we are of the number of three-point attempts in the next half based on machine learning models and using data. And uh, basically just giving like real-time halftime predictions. I thought it was uh, really clever from a marketing standpoint and really uh, stressing one of Google Cloud's strengths along with their exclusive partnership with the NCAA. Absolutely. That's actually that's actually a pretty cool thing they got going on there. What has been their success rate? Have you seen that? You know, I stopped watching the games after my team got blown out, so I didn't keep up with the I stats. I think it was somewhere around a 78% success rate, which isn't terrible when it comes to trying to predict. Uh, I would say that trying to predict scores and points of a basketball game, uh, was it all the way down to the free throws, to the actual... Uh, I don't know. I guess it's not that bad if you look at all the data. You have a lot of AI and... And facial recognition and like you know movement recognition as well, where you could probably predict a lot of that if people are on their game yep. or not on their game. They were giving predictions for number of rebounds, number of assists, and, and you know, if you look at hundreds of thousands of previous games and team data, you know all, all the ridiculous amounts of previous data points, uh, they were able to get to about a seventy to seventy six percent confidence uh, based on previous data and what they saw in that first half what you could reliably see coming up in the next half after that. It's really all about taking massive amounts of data, crunching it, and getting accurate results from it. And that's really been one area where Google really kind of stands apart from everyone else. That's really cool. That's really cool. So I know what everybody really wants here. They want to know what's going on. So 
Let's go ahead and move over to our next stuff, and let's do a quick recap what we had yesterday and then do our quick announcement that we have going on today. And then I'm going to demo some of the – uh, well, some of the stuff in there. And in fact, uh, well, we'll get there in a second. So yesterday we launched, and you were just heard from Matt there, we launched the Google Cloud Security Essentials. Matt, real quick, give us a 30-second synopsis of what that covers for everybody who was not here yesterday. Yes, security is very important, especially working with different cloud platforms, uh, especially with Google Cloud or anyone else. The vendor themselves, in this case Google, takes extraordinary steps to keep your data safe. That being said, there's what's known as a shared responsibility model where you also share some of the responsibility for not having your confidential customer data leaking out to the public and making sure that other members of your organization don't access things you're not supposed to. So this course goes over the primary fundamentals of securing your Google Cloud environment, securing your access management, data storage, operating systems, and others to make sure that the people who need access have access and the people in the network locations who don't need access don't get that access so you don't wind up on the news, which we've unfortunately seen too many uh, cases of that recently. And we definitely don't want any of our students to uh, become a bit of a, a newsworthy event like that. No, we absolutely don't. And so right before our announcement, we'll do one quick recap also of our content team. I uh, would not... Uh, uh, part of this April thing is is so that we can celebrate with the course authors themselves, right? There's been a lot going on at Linux Academy. We've done a lot of development. We've rebuilt some platforms, internal platforms, specifically for our course authors to be able to master and really bring you hands-on practical real-world learning through interactive diagramming, through better practice exam system that we launched, and through our new hands-on lab real-time grader platform, which we're really excited to talk about there. And so these are actually our full-time course authors. We're happy to announce that we actually have five new ones coming in for onboarding over the next three weeks that have accepted the job here at Linux Academy. That puts us at approximately 26 full-time course authors that are always watching this stuff. We have a lot of announcements from the ones that have been here all quarter, all month long, and we are always hiring. Steven, I would think that uh, you're also hiring some security in Google, I think it is, that you're focused on right now? That's exactly right. We're focusing on bolstering and making sure that we can continue bringing this great Google content, and that requires people like Matt and Joe. So we'll be adding to that team at least three more. So I think it's really probably good to point out right now that if you are on this stream and you have a passion for teaching and have a passion for bringing people uh, to new you know, cloud technologies and Google happens to be that forte for you, by all means, make sure you hit up our site, linuxacademy.com, go to the About page and um, apply. Um, security in general, we are really, really targeting that. So um, if you're a security guy, make sure you hit us up on our About page and apply. All right, now let's go to the main event today. Joseph, tell us a little bit about the course that is now publicly available on Linux Academy. Well, it's Google App Engine Deep Dive. And... In it, I go from the very 10,000-foot uh, view overview of what App Engine is, uh, <clears throat> how it works uh, as opposed to other services on Google, how it works as opposed to other services in the market, uh, the advantages for it, and the main markets that you might want to consider, such as uh, websites, mobile, mobile apps, gaming apps, uh, and dive in deeper and deeper talking about its capabilities and its uh, costs, why it's advantageous to use on so many levels for particular projects, and how it's evolved over the years. Uh, one of the things that I thought was interesting is it's one of the first platforms as a service that was available. Uh, it's actually, and I believe it is its 10th year birthday month in April. So woohoo, everybody celebrate. Uh, it is uh, now 10 years old, and one of the things that was fascinating to me as I uh, dived deeper myself into it was how it has evolved from being a proprietary platform uh, to now it has expanded its, uh, its own offerings. Uh, there are two environments that you can work in with App Engine. When the original one is called the standard environment. And that uses proprietary technology, but it's been working for over 10 years. There are over 30,000 websites around the globe uh, that utilize it. 
uh, a great number of web apps, including some very famous ones. Snapchat, for example, uses uh, App Engine. And uh, <clears throat> there are a number of very specific um, businesses. London Heathrow Airport uses it for their mobile app. So you can see it's really a powerful platform, not only because it can do those kind of uh, straight out computing things without having being a, a managed service, um, but they've also evolved to the point where you can now use the flexible environment, which uses a Docker container and expands its use through a number of different languages um, and access to external services. So I cover all of that and we actually build an app in the course that goes from being a standard environment app, uh, enhancing that, adding in more functionality and more connections to other Google Cloud services. And then I show you how to transition that into the flexible environment. Fantastic, Joseph. I think that's going to be a, a great course that's going on. And if anybody has any questions on that, feel free to let us know. And, you know, we're going to do we're going to do a quick deep dive and show you some of the great stuff on here. And I think this might be a good opportunity to also pause for a second. I know some people have to go um, and I'm going to answer a few things that came up in the community. But after this, we're going to let you kind of show us the uh, the Orion paper style, the interactive diagrams tool. I'm going to show it on my screen and and uh, that that has been developed in this course, which is really, really awesome. Um, before we dive on and keep talking a little bit about Google, I just want to address some of the stuff going on inside of the live chat because I love our students. Just the amount of content requests and excitement that's really come from uh, or recently from our community just makes me so really excited, to be honest with you. Um, and one of the things is the AWS CSA Pro, which I was the last course author on. And one of the reasons that we haven't refreshed that yet, and it's scheduled for a refresh, is that we're waiting and we really think there's going to be an exam update. The problem is, is that even though the, the GUI-based interfaces uh, on AWS are different than they were, it's still relatively the same, almost everything in there is still valid for the exam. So it still covers the exam objectives, and we're still seeing successes all day long. It's considering the fact it takes about three months to refresh an exam, and if they go through and update all of the interfaces and then an exam update again, that's three months down the drain. And so we want to really make sure that uh, that we, we kind of are timed perfectly on that. So I would say don't shy away from that course at all, and we do have a lot of AWS refreshes a part of which are actually going to be announced this month also that are scheduled for this quarter that have already been started. So real quick here, Davis, if you don't mind pulling over on my screen here, we have this Linux Academy Music Gallery app that Joseph built. So tell us a little bit about this, Joseph. Sure. Um, this is the actual app that we build throughout the, the course. Uh, it starts off very simply using App Engine. I show how you set up the configuration of the app, uh, then connect to the back end using Cloud Data Store, and then bring in the front end with HTML templates. And the first iteration of it, what I call phase one, is really very straightforward, but it just goes to show how quickly and easily you can get something up and running uh, inside with, uh, with App Engine. Uh, the, uh, the diagram that you see there is actually an interactive diagram, and it shows not only the entire process that we step through, and I'll have that on screen for you while we're building the app, so you can relate to it as you go along. Um, there are three different phases for it, so you can go, uh, you can see from one step one to step two as you build up, and you can also kind of relate and see how the older steps um, show there. So there are the different phases, uh, underneath each of the uh, step buttons, there are little info buttons, and those will bring up some information screens for you. So if you want a quick refresh of how each of these work um, and the various steps and files that are involved, all that information is right at hand for you. Um, on the step three, uh, phase three, sorry, um, screen, there's a little kind of an Easter egg thing uh, if you go over and you happen to tap right on the app engine uh, in the center of the screen, you'll see a little bit more about the flexible environment because that's one of the key features now of the way that um, 
App Engine is structured, it really has evolved and allowed for continued growth. And they've positioned themselves, I think, for the future in a, in a really great way. Absolutely. This is phenomenal, Joe. You did a great job on this. And we're happy to say that our new content standards are actually going to be including uh, most of our new stuff will be having interactive based diagramming, much like the Orion papers. What I will say is that when our community speaks, we listen. And in fact, if you haven't taken the opportunity yet to go on the voting board for our content, you can go to linuxacademy. Nope, that's wrong. You can go to linuxacademy.com.ideas.aha, which is a h a dot i o. And vote on that. And I think what you'll notice is that might give you a few clues into what's also being announced this month as well. Not everything, but we got a lot of coverage coming on there. So very exciting on that. And in fact, let me take a moment here. If you want to go back to my screen, and we're going to head over to the Linux Academy page. And we're going to take a look at this course and also kind of the practice exam system. Um, I got stuck on something here. My bad. All right, so here we go, and we're going to go to Google Cloud Platform, and we're going to uh, browse down, and what we have under Intermediate is Google App Engine Deep Dive. So as you guys can see, we are working on bolstering our content library for Google, and we get a lot of requests. So a lot of those requests are, hey, keep refreshing the old stuff as well, give us new stuff. So as you can tell, with over 26 full-time course authors and 10 open course author positions between uh, DevOps, Linux, security, uh, let's see here, Google, AWS, and Azure. Uh, so if you know of anybody that might make a great course author, we ro love referrals. Might give you a free Linux Academy membership for a year or something like that. We refer somebody. I don't know. It's unofficial. And and uh, so we're really looking on getting all of that content for you. And this is the first month of all of our new processes where you're going to see so many new features, so many amazing and great things. And so if you take a look at it here, we have... Uh, all of the Google uh, Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect, we have coverage on that. Uh, f in terms of the second certification Google offers, uh, Matt is really excited about data and just so happens to be working on another course, but I can't, I really am not at liberty to say anything else other than that. Seriously, pick up the clue. I mean, come on. Oh. <laughs> that's what everybody, that's what it is. If you don't pick up on that, like, come on, just take it. Take it for what it is. And then uh, we have Google Platform for the AWS user, Google App Engine Deep Dive just released today, Python 2.7 scripting for system administrators. We show this in every category. The reason is is because it applies to everything. Uh, this is great. We also have Python 3 that will show up in here as well, and we actually are officially – we'll talk about those later. And Google Cloud Security Essentials, which was launched yesterday. And then Google Container Engine, which is really focused on Kubernetes, so on and so forth. So let's take a quick look at this Google App Engine deep dive. And you can tell us uh, if you want to narrate. I think you already told us a little bit about the course. We have some downloads, which includes our interactive gallery. Part of the app that you're deploying is actually this. Tell us a little bit about this app that we're deploying, Joseph. Sure. So this, um, the LA Music Gallery. So like I said, this is a, an app that uses cloud data store for, for the data, and that's in the phase one part of it. Then we go to adding in the actual album covers to give it a more graphical user interface, um, and that uh, brings in cloud storage. So that's a whole other process that we detail, shows App Engine, uh, and then taking that the next step, it's not enough just to put the data and raw images up. You've got to style it. And you got to bring it uh, something that works with today's uh, mobile screens and everything. So uh, we're leveraging a little bootstrap here. And, and I show, as part of the course, how to work with static files like CSS style sheets and, uh, and images. And so that's kind of key to taking your app from one level to the next. And this is a very simple one that allows you to uh, add in albums, uh, delete them. It uses the basic CRUD um, model for working with data, create, update, create, read, update, delete. Um, and we cover all of that. Now, I do go in, it is uh, using Python, and but if you're not familiar with Python, I go through all of the steps and outline all of the code and explain what everything means. So 
Uh, it's good right from the beginning um, and hopefully up to someone who is just who's familiar with App Engine, but maybe needs a little bit more context so they can decide whether they want to build their next project using App Engine. Fantastic, Joseph. Thank you so much for that. And real quick, we're going to take another moment to interact a little bit with our uh, community that is going in the live stream right now. I'm going to let you guys ask some questions if you want, but I'm going to address some of those questions that are actually in an existence right now. So there's a lot of questions about our membership pricing, and it's really important for me to uh, kind of articulate how our membership pricing works and why we actually price what we price and what happens when in inevitable price increases, which we don't expect one for a really long time, occur. So let me give you an example here. As soon as you sign up for a Linux Academy membership, you are automatically grandfathered in at that pricing. And what that means is even if there are price changes, you are going to be able to maintain that pricing forever. And the reason that we charge what we charge is not because we believe in making money. Uh, believe it or not, we want to provide as much value as humanly possible for our students, right? So think about this. For the price of a single membership, you are able to very potentially get over a six-figure paying job. So the value is really, really tremendous. But one thing that you really need to understand on our offering and why we charge what we charge if you compare it to some of the bigger, bigger, bigger players that have been around for a while is the fact that we offer these hands-on lab platforms and real-time feedback platforms. Now, these are actual real-world environments that are being deployed out for you. Now, there's a lot of different ways to do this. We're going to deploy out pre-built configurations and let you troubleshoot. Or we're going to deploy out pre-built configurations so you only need to focus on that one concept that you need to learn. But it's also going to check off as you're going through those environments that you've completed those real-time, that's our real-time grader, that you completed those objectives in real-time. So part of that offering that we have is Azure Labs, which we're, we're going to talk about Azure all this month. We have some great Azure course authors that are bolstering our Azure content, relaunching everything we have. It's going to be awesome later this quarter and in the Q3. And we have the Azure Labs. We have AWS real live environments. We have Linux environments. We have containers. We have the cloud servers. And quite honestly, there's a very real cost. And if you think about this, when you have over uh, – we have a lot of students. I mean, we have at any given time thousands of labs running and cloud servers that are sitting there, and the cost is very, very real. And so what we want to do is make sure that we're able to provide that value, which helps you get in and learn quickly. But also, we want to be able to update the certifications. We want to be able to update content and give you content that you request super quickly. So that also requires us uh, to have full-time course authors, right? And so one of the things with a full-time course author is we're going to answer your questions. They're here five days a week, 40 hours a week, and if you submit a question via support or the community, they're going to answer it. That's some value that you don't get at other places along with those hands-on labs. And because we're bolstering our, our team there, we're going to be able to get you more content and refresh the content more than anybody else in this absolute category. And we also have a lot of R&D going on around our core values, which is practical hands-on application. Our goal is to make sure that not only can you pass an exam, we believe, we genuinely believe there is a difference between exam dump training, which is uh, training to just pass an exam, and training that trains you to the level at which the exam expects. And what that means is we want to give you real-world, practical, hands-on application so that not only can you pass an exam, our training does help prepare you for an exam just as much, but you'll find that ours is a little bit more in-depth because we're more concerned about not only you passing the exam, that's a measurement of success for us, but you being able to perform this in a real environment, you being able to get that promotion, you being able to do this for your job or run your business or get a new job. That's one of our core values here. Um, and so that's really where our membership, and I'm going to check the community here real quick to see if there's any other questions. That's really a lot of where our value comes from. And I forgot to mention we do have OpenStack hands-on labs as well. So it's, it's one of those things that we just really believe in and that you're going to find at Linux Academy that you don't find at other places. It's that hands-on application. It's more than just videos. It's more than just those exam dumps, right? It's actual training that provides uh, hands-on, right? Our mission was to take in-person training and online self-paced training and merge them together. What does that mean? Well, if you look at in-person training, we have, what am I looking at here? We're showing stuff. We got a question. 
I think everybody wants me to stop talking. All right, let's see here the question real quick. Anthony, AWS CSA prep course, AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, will prepare me to take the exam, or is this a new or different course? There are two exams for the AWS CSA as of today. They announced one a month ago. It takes about three months for us to go through building of Orion papers, building of the courses, building of the hands-on labs, building of the guides, building of the flashcards. So we don't cover that yet. I would, I would tell you that. It takes about three months, and we are started on it, if that tells you anything. The current CSA prepares you for the one that has been around that will be around for the next six months. Um, and we do actually have an exciting announcement over that that will be coming out Friday or Monday as well as it relates to that course uh, as we go there. So, and look at that. Romeo says, I've been grandfathered at the same price for about four years. So that means you're, that's... We, we don't like raising prices, and uh, it's, it's something that we don't like doing. It's, 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 we only do to provide more value, and that if you've been here and you don't cancel your membership, we want to make sure that uh, we are, are loyal to our customers that are loyal to us, right? And so I got another question here. Some lessons in AWS course provide AWS lab environment, and many don't. Wondering if there are any plans to start standardizing on this. So it, it's, it's funny. What you guys need to understand is there's a little bit of a difference between a video lesson and a hands-on practical component in the lab, right? There's not always a one-to-one -one association. Right now, I'm going to tell you that we don't really have a great way of creating a hands-on lab for AWS Direct Connect. Why? Well, what is AWS Direct Connect? You have to have a physical location. It costs money. You have to have physical hardware. It's, it's one of those things that's harder. But there are ways to get practical hands-on application on it. And so we have a lot of stuff coming out on that. But to answer your question, yes, we are absolutely. And I think Thomas Hazlitt is in there as well. Um, we'll touch base on that. We have a really large focus. And Thomas, if you could actually post inside the chat for me and confirm this. But we have a super large focus on that hands-on practical component coming out, starting with all of our new stuff that's being launched this month as well as everything that we're working on. So to answer that question, yes, yes, yes. And so we'll also wait for Tom to respond on there, but I'm pretty sure he is listening. But I can speak to that. Being, uh, being um, CEO, I'm, I'm, that's exactly what we're doing. So I'm just going to let him confirm it, but yes, that's exactly what we're doing. All right, when can we see Terry? Oh, I don't know if I should be offended by that. Is like, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah, Terry. Well, you can see Terry with all of Terry's uh, announcements. And I, here's what I will say is you'll see a lot of Terry this month. Um, let's see here. We'll probably see Terry. I don't know what's next week, but we'll see Terry 11, 11, 11 times, maybe 12 times this month. Hint, hint, hint. Okay, real quick, let me finish my last thought. And when I was talking about more value for the subscription, whenever we do something, we give it to you. If you look at other places, they're going to charge you more for, for other stuff. So you have some environments that charge you $50 to take one hands-on lab, $50, right? Or you have to pay per instance. With a Linux Academy membership, you get unfederated, unlimited access to take a hands-on lab as many times as you want. We've recently upgraded our uh, uh, memory and CPU on our cloud servers. A big cost increase, right? But makes the environment so much better. Also, we launched Scale Your Code integration and Cloud Assessments integration, which may not mean much to you today. It's going to mean a whole bunch over the next three months because we are launching so much stuff on both of those, and they are included, unlimited access, unfederated access, between all of those three platforms as part of your Linux Academy membership. Truly, truly awesome. So Terry Cox says week after next we're going to see him. He's actually going to be in the Texas office for two weeks onboarding uh, some of his new course authors that are Azure course authors. <laughs> Yay. So much Azure. We're going to have all, all of the Azure. So much Azure is coming. <laughs> so much Azure. To answer the question, because every single post – in the community, every single post on LinkedIn, people keep asking, what about Azure? What about Azure? Azure is a tremendous focus for us right now, too. Um, Jeremy says, I love the unlimited hands-on labs. Oh, you want swag. That's how you get swag. Making me, making me blush. 
Uh, Hands-on Labs is one of the reasons I started Linux Academy is because I, I genuinely, I genuinely enjoyed building the underlining platform for it. Um, and it's just one of those things that when it comes to product, I gravitate towards. We have a uh, one of our VPs of tech to- technology, David Smith, who also who I work very closely with on those things. Um, and don't forget, if you are jumping off, we have. Uh, we're going to talk a few more minutes, but uh, we have um, – I'm looking at a whiteboard here. It's 11.15 a.m. tomorrow is when we are going to – is when we are going to live stream again. And it looks like we're going to be joined by Craig tomorrow. Oh, that means Thomas Hazlitt is going to be on, I think. That means we have – derive what you – research what Thomas Hazlitt is and derive the category – the first person to say the category of our course launch tomorrow gets what? Gets what, Winnie? A t-shirt. Gets a t-shirt. The first person that says what category of the course we're launching tomorrow. I will hint it one more time. We will have Craig and Thomas Hazlitt on tomorrow. Tom just put, I will be on tomorrow. I'm sure glad he didn't put a question mark behind that. I don't know. Tom Hazlitt. Somebody said PowerShell question mark. <laughs> All right. We got it. AWS. Riaz Muhammad. AWS. Good job. Good job. Holy moly. For those of you guessing the course not launch, stop it. How the... How, 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 just how, except for we accidentally posted it yesterday, actually, (laughs) that's, that's how. And we also have an AWS security essentials course that was already launched. We also have an AWS security webinar that we're doing. I'm actually going to be a part of that. There's so much security automation on AWS right now. I've been playing with a lot of it as part of some of our platforms, actually, and I'm going to be excited to talk a little bit about it. I'm actually also creating a lot of hands-on labs. Everything I do now is learning activity, which is hands-on component. These are independently consumable, hands-on learning environments that provide real-time grading feedback. Just as a quick announcement, we'll just announce another piece of content right now. I'm going to throw it out there. Um, We launched our IM, our very first IM hands-on lab. I was the one that did it. We launched that last week or right now, and I finished it last week, or something like that, and it's our very first I Am Hands-On Lab, and uh, that's really, really cool. And so real quick, uh, somebody uh, says Sam's house. I don't think that's his name. I think that's where he's at. It's probably where he's, It's. I really think that's probably where he's typing from. He's typing from Sam's house. Um, he says AWS Terraform. Well, tec- <sighs> technically, we did launch that, but we didn't announce it yet. So watch our live streams when I go completely off script and just tell you everything that we're doing ahead of time and make everybody mad. How can we buy L.A. T-shirts and goodies? I'm going to tell you what you can't. You can't. I'm sorry. And the reason you can't is because we're not dealing with that sales tax right now. All of our stuff is focused around, you know, there's a whole bunch of different things. You got to work on shipping, sales tax. We have some cool things coming on. Um, Christoph Limpelair, our chief product officer, is actually going to be working. I take it back. I lied. You can, just not our traditional swag. So we're going to be doing something here, I think, in the next few months that we're going to be sending out to all of our students that let them uh, buy some specific swag. Alternatively, you want to know how you get swag? I'm going to be honest with you. You tweet nice things. You share our stuff. It's the quickest way to my heart. I'm going to send you things. It happens. Say nice stuff. Celebrate with our course authors. They work hard. Opening a course like this is like you going and getting a certification. Think about in the community how we celebrate all the time. Tweet at them. Share their stuff. Let them know how much you appreciate their hard work, which inspires them to do more, which guess what? Is more for you. More, 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 more. That is just, uh, that sounded, I don't know. Lots of stuff there. (laughs) Good stuff. All right. I'm look so for context. I'm looking in the chat right now, so that's what I stopped. I've stopped doing, and we're going to end up wrapping up here in a second. Don't forget that swag thing that I just said. You need to tweet us. Uh, you could do me. You can do Linux Academy Com, so on and so forth. Also, if you have questions for tomorrow that you want us to answer, you can over the next 24 hours, since our live show is about 24 hours from now, which is 11:15 a.m. tomorrow. 
Tweet us at Ask Linux Academy. Again, that's hashtag Ask Linux Academy. And we are going there. And I think I'm going to go ahead and end up wrapping up here. I'm going to look for a few last final things. A lot of this I've already touched on. To answer that question one more time, if you signed up on a subscription plan and you have not canceled that subscription plan for your renewal, you will always maintain that pricing. If you cancel your subscription plan and you reactivate, it will be at the new pricing. So to give you context, we have members that were on our original pricing from six years ago. Six years ago, we launched with one cloud server lab, no quizzes, some study guides, and six videos. Six videos. March of 2012, we launched with a cloud server and six videos. I did all of it. And we launched at $5 a month. And we have members at $5 a month still. Talk about a loss, which is totally okay. Uh, the fact of the matter is I'm happy to celebrate and, and they have been along our journey with us, and it just means so much to me that they've stuck by and they've supported Linux Academy, uh, so on and so forth, and I'm just happy for them to give that. It totally costs us way more than $5 a month per user in terms of cost of doing stuff, way more. But again, it, it's just one of those things that is a core belief of mine that on individuals, we will not raise the pricing, uh, even though we add so much stuff and our cost goes up. If you do not cancel your membership, if you got some sort of special 12 months ago, which will never exist again, you can maintain that forever. If you do not hit the cancel button, it's that, it's that cancel button, right? Okay, cool. And Tom loves his whiskey. Everybody again, askLinuxAcademy.com. Great live show. Joseph Lowry, Matt, Steven, thank you all so much for joining us. Recap one last time. We launched Google app thank engine you. deep dive today. Yesterday, we launched Google Cloud Security Essentials. Tomorrow, we are launching an AWS course, and we'll have Thomas Hazlitt and Craig with us. And this month, we are launching over 70 courses, learning activities, and or challenges. And we just launched our first IM hands-on AWS lab. See you all tomorrow, and thanks for joining us.